how you play chords in a song can be the thing that makes you sound like a professional pianist or like someone who is just starting out. And if you can nail these eight levels of playing chords in a song, then you can immediately transform your playing. But what fun would it be to just copy me? So I'm also going to explain why I'm playing what I'm playing, how to best practice each level so that you can save yourself hours had you not watched this video. And I'm going to give you examples with each level and a demonstration of all eight levels being used in a song at the end. So let's get into it. So level one is triads. In music, there are 12 individual notes that we can use, which on a piano is seven white notes and five black notes. After those 12 notes, the notes just repeat again. They're just higher and lower versions of the same notes. So here is a C and here is another C. Every song that you can think of uses something called a scale to narrow down these 12 notes to just seven. And the easiest scale to learn first is the scale C major because the seven notes that that uses is just the white notes. So that's C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And then the scale just repeats again up and down the piano. To form a triad from this scale, all we need to do is play every other note in the scale. So a C triad using a C scale would be the notes C, E, and G. And we can actually use this pattern starting on every note in the scale. So chord one using a C scale would be that C chord. Chord two would be a D chord, chord three an E chord, and so on all the way up the scale. So because there are seven individual notes in a scale, there are also seven triads that we can use. And if you find a song that uses the scale of C major, the chords that are in that song will be a form of one of these seven triads. So level one is to play these triads in the left hand and play the melody in the right hand for whichever song you choose. And the example I'm going to give you is the song Sorry by Justin Bieber. And the actual chords that this song uses is an A flat triad, a C triad and a B flat triad. Okay, on to level two, which is inversions. Now, when we play triads, we can spend a lot of time jumping around on the piano. And that's because for one chord in a song, you might have a C triad and the next chord might be a G triad. So you have to jump to it. Now, inversions are one of the biggest things that can change your playing from sounding like a beginner to someone who actually really knows what they're doing. So if I play a C triad, which is the notes C, E and G, I can play this like this, which is called a root position triad because... The C, which is the name of the chord, is at the bottom. However, if I take this C off and play another C on top of the chord instead, then this is called a first inversion triad because I'm playing the same notes, but now I've just rearranged them. From here, I can actually do the same again. So I can take the E off the bottom and put that on top and that would give me a second inversion triad. If I did exactly the same thing again and took the G off the bottom and put that on top, I would essentially get back to a higher version of what I started with, which is the notes C, E and G in root position. But what is the actual point in inversions? What's the point in rearranging the notes? Well, the point is that we can do something called voice lead in order to make this sound much better to listen to. So for example, if I have a song that is playing the chord of C major and then playing the chord of G major, instead of jumping to get to that G major chord, I can find an inversion of the G major chord that is close to that C major chord. So the notes in the G chord were G, B and D, but I can find a G, a B and a D much closer to that C chord by just moving the bottom two notes down one. This is much better voice leading. And the reason we call it voice leading is because if you were to think of each of these notes in the chord as a voice, if you had three people singing each of these notes, you wouldn't want them to be jumping up and down to find notes that work in the next chord. You'd want them to be moving by step or not moving at all. So we can use inversions to mean that our chords don't have to move around so much. And that sounds much better to listen to. And it's also physically easier to play because you're not having to move too much. So as the example, for this, I'm going to use the song Greedy by Tate McRae. Now, the scale that this song uses is the scale of F sharp minor, and the seven notes that make up that scale are F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, and E. And the triads that it uses is D, B, F sharp, and E. Now, if I was to play these as regular triads, I would play them like this. Whereas playing them with inversions sounds like this.
Ooh. Okay, on to level number three, which is playing bass notes in the left hand and chord notes in the right hand. So far, the two levels that we have done have all been kind of in the middle of the piano. You haven't got a lot of room to move out to different parts of the piano. But if you want a song played on the piano to sound like well, a song. We need to start thinking of the parts that make up that song. And the parts that make up a song usually are the drums, a bass line, some pianos, guitars, or synths that fill out the chord and the texture of the song, and a melody. And this is kind of what we want to replicate when we're playing songs on the piano. So this means that we want to play much further down on the piano. But if we're to play all three notes of a chord really far down on the piano, it can sound quite muddy and close textured. You can't really make out each of the individual notes if we play them all that low on the piano. So instead, we're just going to play the root note of the triad. So if we play a C major chord, then we would play a C in the bass. And for a D triad, we'll play a D in the bass. Now that's all well and good playing chords in the right hand and a bass note in the left hand if we only have chords and a bass note. But what happens if you have a melody as well? How do you play chords and a melody in the right hand? And this once again is a big factor between those that sound really professional on the piano and those that don't. What we actually want to do is prioritize the melody, but try and include some chord notes wherever it's possible to do that. So for example, if we take the song Crazy by Niles Barkley, this song uses a C minor scale and the seven notes in a C minor scale are C, D, E, flat flat, F, G, A flat, and B flat. And the triads that this song uses are a C triad, an E flat triad, an A flat triad, and a G triad. So firstly, we could play the melody in the right hand and the bass notes in the left hand. However, that sounds very simplistic. So firstly, what we can do is try and add some of the chord notes. It doesn't matter whether that's one chord note, two chord notes, or all three of the chord notes. But we can add those notes when we play the left hand bass note. And when you get more confident with that, then you can start adding more chord notes with some of the melody notes as well. Okay, onto level four. And level four is playing octaves or fifths in the left hand. Now, still, even with chord notes in the right hand and a bass note in the left hand, it can still sound quite sparse and thin textured. And that's because there are still lots of gaps on the piano. And if you want something to sound thicker textured, then you've got to try and play across the piano. And the first way we can do that is by playing octaves in the left hand. Now, an octave is just from one letter name to the next of the same letter name on the piano. So a C to a C or a D to a D. And and the reason it's called an octave is because oct means eight and it's actually eight notes in the scale apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Playing octaves instead of single notes will add a bit more of a beefy texture. And the song example I'm going to show you for this is the song Shallow by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Now, if we do what we did in the last step, which is play bass notes with some chord notes in the right hand and the melody, you would get something like this. However, if we play that same thing, but this time add octaves in the left hand, we get this. And already that sounds much thicker. But let's say you get bored of playing octaves or you want something else to play to make it sound just as thick. But to keep it interesting, well, for this, we can use fifths. And if octave means eight, then fifth means Five. So if we take a regular triad like the C major triad that we had, the distance between the first key and the last key of that triad is five notes in the scale. So this is a fifth. So in the left hand, playing fifths is kind of like a halfway house between playing single bass notes and playing the full chord, which sounds really muddy because you're essentially playing the full chord just without the middle note. And playing fifths in the left hand for this song would sound like this.
Okay, on to level five, which is seventh chord. So a regular triad is notes one, three, and five in a scale from whichever note in that scale you're starting on. And a seventh chord is just adding the note seven to that. So you would get one, three, five, and seven. And once again, we can play a seventh chord for every note in a scale. So in a C major scale, we could play a triad with a seventh starting on note one, note two, note three, note four, note five, note six, and note seven. Adding sevens to a chord gives it a bit more personality or a bit more spice. Regular triads are great and they form the basis of literally every song that you're ever going to play. But if you want to start adding uniqueness and personality to your playing, then adding sevens is a good way of doing that. And the example I'm going to show you for this is the song Someone You Love by Lewis Capaldi. And the scale used for this song is an A flat scale, which is the notes A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, and G. And the triads are an A flat triad, an E flat triad, an F triad, and a D flat triad. So playing this without sevens would sound like this. However, if I was to add a seventh chord to the last two of these chords, it would sound like this. It adds a little bit of character and flavour that may not be in the original song, but can make your piano version more unique. Okay, onto step number six, which is adding extensions. Now, in music, an extension is any note that you add to a triad. And some of the most popular extensions to add are ninths and elevenths. And we can work these out in exactly the same way that we worked out seventh chords. If we take our original triad, this is note one, three, and five. And we can count through the scale to get to note number nine or note number eleven. So for a C triad, note number 9 is a D, and note number 11 is an F. And just because it's called a 9th or an 11th doesn't mean that we have to play it 9 notes away or 11 notes away. In a C triad, we could play a D here, and this would be a 9th, or we could play an F here and this would be an 11th. Now, as you can probably hear, extensions make the sound much crunchier. The notes are really compact and close together, so the chords sound like they're kind of clashing. And although out of context, they sound kind of horrible. When you play them as part of a song, it really does give it character. And the example for this I'm going to use is As It Was by Harry Styles. So if I was to play this just as a normal song, I would play it like this. However, if I was to play it by adding some ninths and elevenths in, it would sound like this. Okay, onto level number seven, which is adding left-hand patterns, arpeggios, and broken chords. So far, I've only really talked about what to play, but once you understand that, then you can start playing with how you play it. And one of the biggest difference between someone who is really confident on the piano and someone who is less confident on the piano is your ability to experiment and play around with different patterns. And there are countless chord patterns that you can use or make up in order to make your playing sound really interesting. But I'm going to give you five common chord arpeggio patterns that you can use. Now, an arpeggio is just a chord where you play each of its individual notes rather than playing them all together. So normally you would play a chord like this but playing an arpeggio would be playing it like this. And this in itself is actually our first chord pattern. Instead of playing a chord where you play all the notes together, you can just go backwards and forwards from the bottom to the top. And this is actually the exact pattern that's used in the song Someone Like You by Adele. The second pattern that you can use is probably one of the most useful because you can literally apply this to any song that you want. And that's playing both fifths and octaves in the left hand and then separating the notes. You can apply this to pretty much most songs, but the song that I'm going to show you is Blinding Lights by The Weeknd.
The third left hand pattern that you can use is playing the root note of a chord followed by the full chord an octave higher. If we were to take the chord of C major, for example, that would be playing a bass note of a C followed by a C chord an octave higher. This kind of deals with that problem where if you play a full chord too low down, it sounds really muddy. But you're also getting to play bass notes, so it pads out the texture. And you might see this pattern in songs such as Walking in the Air. The last two left hand patterns that I'm going to show you are probably the most popular and they also make a song sound really advanced so they're really worth practicing and learning. The first of the two patterns is kind of an extension of one of the other patterns that we had where we played the fifth and the octave backwards and forwards. This time we're going to add a note on top of that and that is going to be the middle note of the chord. The one that's missing when we play just the fifth and the octave. So for a C major chord the middle note would be an E. If we were playing the fifth and the octave, we would be playing C, G, C. So now we're going to play that E, but we're going to play that E at the top like this. And then we can just keep going up and down like this. And if I just play this pattern up and down on its own, it already sounds more advanced. And the song that I'll show you for this is the song Can't Help Falling In Love. And the last left hand pattern is kind of an extension of that same pattern. So for a C chord, which is the notes C, E and G, for the pattern that we've just used, we had C, G, C, E, which is the same notes just spread further across the piano. But what we can actually do is play C, G, C and put a third finger over to play that E and then just carry on. This means that we can play up and down the piano as much as we like. And this is the pattern that is most frequently used whenever you see someone playing something by ear because it really does pad out the texture on the piano and you can make something sound really big or really small just by how much of the piano that you use. And the song example I'm going to show you for this is the song Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo. Okay, on to level number eight, which is right hand patterns, arpeggios and broken chords. Now, the left hand is mostly what's going to pad out the texture of the song, especially when you have a melody to play, because in the right hand, you're kind of stuck playing the melody along with some of the chord notes. However, what about moments in the song where there is no melody? Or what happens if you're just accompanying singing and you've got nothing going on in the right hand? Well, not only can we use arpeggios and patterns in the left hand, we can also use them in the right hand. And even if we do have a melody, we can play these arpeggios and patterns in gaps in the melody and make it sound like you're an absolute pro at the piano. And the first way we can do this is by using regular arpeggios. Now, a regular arpeggio is just just separating out the notes in a chord. For a regular C chord, we would have the notes C, E, and G. But we can actually play this up and down the piano. So we could go C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G. And you can play it up and down and much quicker. And I can show you this using the song Wonderwall by Oasis. The second way we can use patterns in our right hand is to use something called broken chords. And this is essentially where we play through each of the different inversions of a chord, but arpeggiate them. So with C major, we'd have C, E, G, and then E, G, C, and then G, C, E. And we can do this as a three note pattern like that, or we can also do it as a four note pattern and repeat the bottom note at the top. So C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G. C, E, G, C, and so on. Broken chords are used all the time in their own right in music, and one of the most famous examples of this is the third movement of the Moonlight Sonata. 
But we can also use these in much the same way as the arpeggios in order to add decoration or make it sound really flashy or technical on the piano. And once again, I'll show you using Wonderwall. And here's Wonderwall with both arpeggios and broken chords. So that is the eight levels of playing chords on the piano. And here is the song Fix You by Coldplay using all eight levels. So there you go, that is the eight levels of playing chords on the piano. If you want to see me reacting to my subscribers playing, then head on through and I will see you there.